U.S. entertainment companies are widely expected to see a quarterly earnings bump driven by these ongoing strikes. The Writers Guild has been on strike for more than three months. The Screen Actors Guild voted to join them about two weeks ago. With film and TV productions completely shut down, distributors are now sitting on money that would have supported upcoming projects. Alex Weprin joins us now. He's a media and business writer for The Hollywood Reporter. So, Alex, you write about studios hoarding money. What's the short-term impact for the industry? Yeah, it's kind of a paradox of these strikes. You know, in the near term, these companies aren't going to see their revenue really fall. In fact, in the case of Netflix just last week, their revenue actually rose last quarter. But at the same time, their costs are going down. They're not funding these television productions, these film productions. That would cost billions of dollars you know, between all the studios and companies. So the net is that in the short term, they're going to have a lot of extra cash on their hands, and they're going to have to figure out what to do with it, whether it's to save it for when the strikes are over or to put it to some other use. So let's take that a step further. What are the long-term impacts of this hoarding of cash? Yeah, I mean, look, the long-term effect of the strike will be negative for everyone, of course. Uh, but, you know, it does give the studios and entertainment companies some options in the short term and medium term. They could choose to fund productions outside the United States where the actors and writers aren't on strike. Netflix has a lot of international productions, for example. They could choose to fund reality shows or other types of content that they could use to put on their networks or put on their streaming services. Uh, but, of course, you know, in, in the long run, all of these companies need original content to keep growing. So they will eventually put it to use uh, on content when the strikes are over. I was just going to ask you, what do you think the tipping point is in the strike? Yeah, that's a really tough question. You know, certainly the economics have become a sticking point between the, the guilds and the studios. Uh, AI, artificial intelligence, has become a surprisingly tough issue to navigate. You know, the actors want to protect their likenesses for future use. So it's not entirely clear what it's going to take to resolve these strikes. There's clearly a lot of points that need to, that where there's a you know, big gap between the parties. Uh, ultimately, the first thing that has to happen is, you know, the parties have to get back to the negotiating table and begin talking again, because right now that's not happening. What do you think could be the catalyst for these negotiations uh, re-engaging? You know, if one side or another is willing to kind of uh, step in and say, you know, we'll, you know, seed this point, let's focus on this, that could certainly break some ground. Uh, in the last writer's strike in 2007, some lawyers and kind of Hollywood heavyweights stepped in to try and mediate the situation California Governor Gavin Newsom actually offered to help mediate uh, earlier this week. It could require a third party like that to step in and kind of bring the parties together and kind of find some yeah. common ground. Kind of break the logjam. Um, you know, when you, we see a lot of disruption in any industry, it often leads to consolidation in the future. Do you think that's uh, part of the equation? Yeah, I mean, in the long term, you know, a lot of Wall Street observers do expect further consolidation among the entertainment companies, uh, perhaps it's a tech company buying a smaller studio like Lionsgate. Uh, perhaps it's a really major deal where two larger entertainment companies decide to merge and form one company to really take on the giants. That is something that Wall Street expects to happen, although uh, it's not really expected in the near term. It's more of a 2024, 2025 thinking. What do you think the wild card is here? Yeah, I mean, there are so many unknowns as it relates to the strike. You know, the economic damage is going to be tough to figure out, you know, ahead of time. We don't really know until we kind of see it in the real world. Uh, and that kind of is the big wild card. How much collateral damage is there going to be in the Southern California economy, in the entertainment economy? Will consumers choose to watch content on TikTok or YouTube or other platforms and just not go back to some of these big streaming services or networks. There's going to be some long-term repercussions here. We just don't know what they are yet. Just final question. Um, I was reading about the impact on influencers, right? People who aren't part of these unions and that this could really help them see a, a bump up, maybe in a way that they start to push, you know, traditional actors out of that space. Yeah, I mean, influencers have been growing. The, the creator economy has been growing for years, thanks in part to platforms like YouTube and TikTok and Snapchat. And certainly younger consumers are very comfortable consuming that type of content on their phones. So it is certainly something that is continuing to grow and will continue to grow through these strikes. And, you know, whether or not people choose to kind of give up movies or TV shows in favor of that content remains to be seen. But the mix, you know, of how much how many hours of TV people watch versus how many hours of content, you know, on these creator platforms they watch, that could change. 
Alex Weprin, thanks for your analysis. Thank you.